it's such a blessing to me that you've joined us. And I can guarantee, I feel I can guarantee that you're going to be blessed by my guest today. I have Charlotte Gamble with me today. She is amazing. You're amazing. Uh, thank you. I don't want to do a long <laughs> preamble because I just, every time, I will say this because I want y'all to know. And I've told Charlotte this, but you, I started listening to you at such a, I was in such a hurting time and going through divorce. And again, you know, there's, there's that. And right. uh, it makes divorce so much. I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> um, but when you're going through it again, and there's a lot of shame that can, that Satan brought against me. And, right. But at the same time, a lot of work the Lord was doing. And I went to conference after, I became a conference junkie <laughs> for about two years. And the Lord just gave me opportunities to hear you. And every single time you poured into me. And I, it, I want to call you so prophetic because it seemed like you were just talking to me. And I, I thank you for that and what you've done and. I know juggling and all of that, it took a lot to sow that seed into my life. So I just want to thank you. I'm honored that I got to be used by God in part of your story and journey. And I think that's just how God works, right? I think he's just looking for us to be a vessel. Yes. I think if we get in the way, it becomes about us. But if we stay a vessel, he can pour whatever it is that he needs to pour out of us into others. And I think that's what happens in those moments that feels like prophetic to you because God's getting to be who God needs to be in those moments. And so I love hearing testimonies and stories because that means I must have got out of the way, which is always a good thing. So God could have his way, right? <laughs> I believe we'll both get out of the way and just let the right. Lord have the, his way in, in your life. And, you know, I, I, I jumped right into that, but I'm, I'm, I feel like everybody should know who you are. But I want to just let people know who you are just before we get going, because what we're going to talk about today is really what you just said right and it, and i think we think it has to be a preacher on a stage making that impact right the most intimate impact is the one we can just have on right each other as a as in relationship right. so right. that's where we're going to go but let me just tell you that charlotte is an author a speaker you were a pastor yes you've moved <laughs> out of that and um and always will be a mother. Uh -huh. She's the founder and leader of Cherish Conference and the co-founder of Dare to Be, which reaches thousands of women in the U.S. And your church, your, it's your husband is still. Yeah. And I still help. I'm just and... not on the salary anymore. I just came off being full time. But still, I mean, when you're in ministry together, you're never not pastoring someone. <laughs> That's right. At Life Church. And you're from, I remember coming up there, we were in the church with my dad. I know. Years That's ago. crazy. Years yes. ago. And uh, yeah, you uh, you impacted me then. So t talk to us. You have this new program that you're doing and um, you talk about mentorship. So uh, jump into that about what that is and yeah. then we'll just go for it. Well, there's there. kind of a journey. I think anything that we do, right? There's like this journey that, that God started years, years before I kind of caught up to the God timing of it. And I think even that in itself is a lesson that oftentimes we try and rush ahead of where God is and God's timing is always beautiful. Everything is beautiful in the God timing. And so for years, a lot of people have said to me, Hey, could you mentor me? Is there something you could do that would be like a mentorship in my life? And my answer was always absolutely not. <laughs> hey, nobody I just, got time for that. Well, That's how you feel. I it? just thought like, I just thought, you know, for me, like a mentor was like, I just thought of like Yoda from Star Wars, you know, like someone that was green that had wise words that they would say in random sentences. And I was like, it's just not me. I'm just not, I'm not built to do that. And so. Actually, it was in the middle of the pandemic, which obviously in England caused us to be locked down for a lot longer than a lot of places in the U.S. And in that time, I felt God bring this back to mind and no one was asking for it. You know, this was like something that before I'd been asked for multiple times. And I felt God say there is a need for you to go back to the ministry that I originally called you to do. And now it's going to look a little different. Well, when I was probably around the time that we first ever met and you spoke life over me in those moments about the ministry that God had on my uh, life and in my future before it really began to be unfolded. And you were faithfully serving. I was, my dad. dad. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I understand that. Right. Like, it's 
you you never really break away from that either right. in your heart. And the basis of why I did that was what God was reminding me of because that was from Exodus 17 that God spoke to me. And from that passage where, you know, uh, Joshua's on the front line fighting, but Moses is on the hillside and he takes Aaron and her with him. And when I went to that scripture, I felt God say, I'm going to show you what your role is in ministry. And this is what I'm calling you to give your life to. And I was like, oh, am I a Joshua on the front line? I felt God say, no. Am I Moses? You know, that's like on the hillside. No. I was like, well, there's only two dudes left and I don't really want their job. And that was Aaron and her who really didn't get anything glamorous or anything that sounded really important because all they did all day was uphold Moses' arms. But if they didn't hold his arms up, the battle was lost. So whatever Joshua did, it was irrelevant if these two people did not uphold his arms. And I felt God say at that point in my life, that's what you're called to do. So I did that for my father, upheld his arms in ministry. I've done that for other leaders. I do that now on staff around US for church pastors. And that's what God reminded me of when I began this mentorship. I need you to go and uphold the arms of women who are serving living their life, but just feel like, man, I need someone to lift my arms up. And so the collective was a ministry that I birthed out of that. And it's taken me by surprise how many people are out there that are just like, man, that's exactly the explanation of what I feel. I feel like I know what I'm called to do. I know my assignment, but I just feel weary sometimes. I feel like I need some wisdom. I feel like I need someone to go, I understand you. And that really is what upholding someone's arms is. So the collective's been this beautiful journey of people finding one another and me being able to mentor them that way. I think one of the things I appreciate about your ministry is how you you frame things in such a way and using the word, you always I've always heard you do like you pull out the most amazing things out of Bible out of the Bible stories. <laughs> I'm in like there. <laughs> Yes. But you pull these things out that frame situations and give clarity to the solutions like the solutions are all in the word of god right. and and you just have listen to the spirit and I, I can only imagine what this mentorship program is going to do for people as you as you keep framing that and then that'll have such an intimacy to it too right i love that and i was intentional about that like the the amount of people that would be in the on this mentorship at any one time like i start a new one every month and they go on it for five months with me. And I just didn't want there to be hundreds of women on the screen at one time. I wanted to make sure it was a small enough group that I could know their name, that I could pray over them, that I could speak life over them. And when we first did it with this group, who were strangers at the beginning, they're all on the screen and I'm talking to them and I'm ministering into their life. And all but these strangers at first sat kind of a little guarded because they don't know who else is on the screen. Well, we were about 20 minutes in. They're all crying. <laughs> they're all like, oh, my goodness. You don't care who's it watching It was just like cry. a relief, you yeah. know, to just go, okay, I thought I was going crazy because I'm trying to juggle over here. I'm trying to find clarity over here. I'm dealing with this situation in my marriage. Um, but, you know, someone spoke on the screen and made me realize, man, everybody has to go through these journeys. But sometimes we just don't share. And so you feel alone in your journey. And the truth is you're not alone. And so we've just been able to create an environment where people understand why there's other people that can uphold me in this season. How do you define mentorship? For me, it's finding someone, because I think there's a lot of great mentors out there, right? And so I think it's finding someone who has something in them or on them that you also recognize is in you. So the best way I can describe it is, do you remember when, you know, there's, there's times when you choose to do things. I, I might choose to, I don't know, write a journal or I might choose or you might choose to, you know, start a, a ministry or a business. But I do believe there are times when things choose you. And that's very different. When something chooses you, it changes you. And that's hard to explain. So if you think about Mary and Elizabeth, what they carried chose them. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus chose to use Mary to carry Jesus chose Elizabeth to use to carry John. And so that chose them. They did not choose that. And what chose them was inside of them. And what chose them began to change them. So what they were carrying began to change their shape. It began to change what they wanted to eat, began to change their conversations, because now I'm talking about something that before it wasn't there. I wasn't talking about it. And I, there's someone at home right now that's watching this and something has chosen you. And you don't even know how to describe it. It's in you. 
you feel like, man, I, I'm carrying something. I feel like God's entrusted something to me. It's a word or it's a song or it's a, an idea in business and it's chosen you and it's changing you. And right now you're getting language for what's going on. And but what happened next was what was changing them moved them. And so God says to Mary through the angel, hey, Elizabeth is also carrying something that chose her. And so this older woman, Elizabeth, and this younger woman, Mary, what's choosing them is changing them, but it also moves them closer together. And the closer they get together, what is in them begins to leap. That to me is mentorship. That what is in you finds a resonating sound in someone else. And when you get in the same space, something comes alive in you because that person suddenly is speaking a language you understand. Kind of what you said at the beginning. I was in a conference and I felt like you were speaking right into me. Well, at that moment, what was in me was making what was in you leap. And that doesn't always happen with every voice because it's to do with what you're carrying at that time. The, the two women were joined by what had chosen them and it moved them towards. So I think good mentorship is you understanding, man, I feel that voice is making something inside me leap. So I need to be around it because they understand what I'm carrying.